Welcome to Rise Up with Jenny and Katie. We have another amazing show. We have Apostle Jackie Tyre with us today. We're going to be doing rapid fire questions. Lean in, catch as much wisdom and fire and power that you can because she is bringing the wisdom and revelation. So join us. Amen. Thank you for Welcome. being here, Apostle oh, Jackie. So glad to be here. This is awesome. Yes. It's so awesome to have an apostolic woman with us. Yes. <laughs> we are so excited. It's an interesting journey to be an apostolic woman. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It is. And yes. women can be apostolic. Absolutely. Yes. God can. called women to be apostles, and he yes. never said we couldn't. It is religion that took us out of it. And it's not that we fight against men. It's not that we are combative. It's we're walking with them. That's what Jesus, that's what God the Father said in the beginning in Genesis 1. That Adam was male and female and together they take dominion. And there is such a synergy when men and women walk together knowing who they are mm-hmm. not trying yes. to be somebody else i don't apostle like a man apostles right yeah. because i've got a mothering dna but god created me that way so that i could help people come yeah. into the fullness yeah. of their destiny and men will see it from one angle i'll see it from another but together we get a picture and then we have an idea of how to move forward from holy spirit and it's an amazing journey who would have thought (laughs) that this southern girl raised in denominational christianity where women could play the piano or sing or marry a minister of music or a pastor or those kind of things which everybody thought maybe i would but then it was like no this is what I've called you to. I've called you to revival. I've called you to leadership. Now, will you trust me? Will you trust me? And so it's been quite a journey for a little over 30 years now. Now you're leading an apostolic hub there in Atlanta, Georgia. I am. I am. And a city gate? City gate, Atlanta. We're located in Peachtree Corners. We're north of the city. And uh, God has just favored us with uh, People, we're not a real large, but you know, I don't get into numbers. We're strong. Yeah. Our people are strong. They're growing in grace. They're discovering who they are. And we love each other. Amen. We're a family Family. that has learned how to be an ecclesia, to release government, to legislate, to release the prophetic words over a region. And that's our DNA. Yes. So we're yeah. excited about it and yeah. see great things ahead in the future. That's what I think that's the question I want to start with mm-hmm. is how to release heaven, how to open up a gate um, in regions mm-hmm. so that the heaven's kingdom kingdom can come to earth, you know, because I know that if you're sitting there listening, you're like, well, how does God move? How do I take territory? How does um, heaven move over where I'm living right mm-hmm. now and in my situation and my family? So how do you open up the gates and move? I will say this just straight off the bat. Find out what heaven says about your region. Come wow. on. For yeah. too long, and I, I was trained as an intercessor. That's where my D, original DNA sort of comes out of is yeah. this prophetic intercession. And we would look at the situations that are in, in our community, the bad things the crime, the poverty, and all the things you have to look at. But the reality is you're not going to get the strategy of how to change it if you don't find out what heaven's saying. So when I would drive the state of Georgia, I would drive and I would see barns that were abandoned fields that didn't have plant, you know, crops yeah, growing on right. anymore. I would see parts of cities that were uh, dilapidated and read the crime statistics and do all those things. And the Lord said, don't talk to me about those. Ask me how I see this when it's transformed. Ooh, see the end from wow. the beginning. Right. Yes. yes. Look at what God says. This is what this community looks like when it's transformed. Then pray toward that end. Be the intercessor that causes those two things to come together. Take what is bad, but take what God is saying and say, God, I'm going to be this intercessor that causes a meeting of the two and his will always trumps the will of heaven. Wow. It's always the stronger. So just ask. I say to the people watching today, ask 
God, what do you, how do you see my family? Yes. How do you see my children? How do you see my church? How do you see my neighborhood, my street? Get it down to your street. What does God say about your street? What does God say about your city, your state, and your nation? He has a plan, and it's always good. Wow. Amen. Amen. That's so good. Amen. It takes us out of the defeatist yeah. mode. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't know about you, but if I look at what's going on around me, and I read the news and watch some of the news broke broadcast god mm -hmm. forgive me for ever looking at it anymore yes. yeah you know you get into this defeatist mentality yeah. and it will s just like pull faith away from you wow. because you're seeing what the pontifications of the enemy are putting out there yes. and then you lose sight of what god wants to do so yes. keep your eyes on God, keep your ears turned toward His voice, and then agree with Him. Say what He says, do what He says, yes. and that makes it just keep simple. moving. It does. It does. <laughs> yeah, because the enemy, the enemy always wants to give intimidation tactics. Absolutely. And for us to bite them. But yeah. we know God is greater. And I wanted to ask a question yeah. that kind of tags along with what Katie was saying, but as a prophetic person, it seems like we're, we stay in constant warfare. Mm -hmm. It seems we are marked by the enemy to just go after because we are taking territory as Christians, as believers, right. as we're praying, as we're praying for our city, praying for our family, believing and standing. Yeah. Can you teach us how to break through out of that warfare? Oh man, what a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> how many days do yeah, we have right, on this one? Right, right. I'm sorry. Let's kind of just pull it down. Yes. First of all, we hear God and we have yeah. to say, God, I believe you. Yes. Yes. Then when I get a prophetic word, particularly if it's something that's lead me in, leading me into like a territorial advance, the first thing I will always ask the Lord, is there anything about this that I need to work on right here? Oh, yeah. Yes. Is there anything about this warfare that he may be calling me into to advance the kingdom? Is there something? I want to be sure that the enemy has no legal access in me. And it's not navel gazing. It's a quick thing. Yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit, is there anything I need to shore up? Are there any kinks in my armor? Is there legal access where if I go advancing into this territory, the enemy will have legal access to me? Wow, that's good. Wow. That's and when I, when I discovered that if I would get those things closed, mm -hmm and get myself into what, Francis Frangipane coined this phrase years ago, the place of immunity. And it's based out of Psalm 91, that when you're under the shadow of his wings, you're in a place of immunity. Wow. So what that means is you've heard what God has said, you've gotten yourself prepared, you're doing it not presumptuously, because sometimes prophetically, God will give us things, <laughs> Yeah. that are down the road and then we go run out and do it right, right. and we ran out from under the wings mm. and so I wow. look at not just what has he said how does he want to work it in me first because yes. I've got to become the word not just release the word oh say that again got to become the word not just release mm. the word wow. and that way it's real in me yeah. Uh, Clay Nash uses this phrase of when the word comes, faith comes, yeah. but then we work with the word until we come to faith. Wow. So you kind of war with it until internally. It's in you. Then once you get to that place, it doesn't matter what people wow. throw at you. Wow. That's good. It doesn't mean that the warfare doesn't come, it doesn't affect you the same way. Mm. But so the internal, God, is there something here? then the timing and making sure you're walking out the word the way he is saying to walk it out because then he goes if you go in my way i've got the angels all around you they're surrounding you you are protected and you can go where demons tread yeah you go right in there with them and you're you're going to be victorious. Unharmed, unscathed. Right. I mean, and I've learned a lot of this mm. through a lot of warfare yes. where I, as a another friend of mine says, got the cheese beat out of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and no. had things that happened and I had to go, okay, why? I know you said this. Why did this happen? And just taking the time yeah. to learn how do I walk forward in a greater measure of protection? Yes. And especially as a leader, I don't want to lead people 
into a place yeah. that they're going to get beat up. Right. Mm. And the final thing I'll say wow. on walking out prophetically is alignment is vitally important. Wow. Yes, that's yeah. so Especially good. Especially for that. prophetic intercessors. It's really, really important that we are properly aligned with so those who carry a greater measure of authority than we do. Yes. When I began to discover authentic apostolic leadership in some people that carry a greater sphere than I do, which is not real hard. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's a lot of people out there who are carrying some amazing amazing anointings, yes. Dutch Sheets, yes. Clay Nash, yes. Tim Kerskadian. Yes, yes. Amazing. he's amazing. Our yes. pastor. Amazing. Our pastor. Yes. We're honored yeah. to sit under Tim Kerskadian. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. When you're in that place, what we do is apostolic leaders is not confine you, yes. but empower and release. Then you go out in alignment so that you're protected. If you just decide, well, I'm going to go do this thing, right. ah, what does he know? Right. That would be trouble. Yes. yes. Because the enemy goes, oh, there's a little bit of a rebellious streak in there. Yes. And, yes. and that, it, it's a lot of people take that as a, apostolic leaders trying to be controlling. Mm -hmm. And it's not. I've just mm -hmm. seen people go out and really suffer because they went out in rebellion and outside mm -hmm. of timing. Wow. And pride is usually yeah. one of the things. Hey, yeah. I did it. Early yeah. on, I did it, and I had to learn yeah. Yeah. by suffering some things. Jesus said that even Jesus said, the Hebrew in Hebrews it says that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Now, if it says that for him, yes, wow, and he was perfectly wow. obedient. Mm. Yes. Wow. What about us? Because we're not perfectly obedient. You just humbled me. You just me. Well, yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> that is I'm giving you what he gives me yeah, constantly. Yes. Oh. You know, but mm. it's this journey yes. of intimacy yeah. and trust. Mm. Trusting leaders mm. is our demonstration of trusting God. Wow. That's beautiful. Whew. Now, are there bad leaders out there? Yes. Absolutely. And God yes. help us. Yes. yes. But when you find one, when God says, submit here, yeah. the greatest days of your future just unlocked. Wow. Because wow. your destiny is unlocked with those you're aligned with that Absolutely. can help you, trust you, counsel you, wow. mm -hmm. send you on your way. I want to honor our pastor. We're yes. actually sitting in his church yes. yeah. in Louisiana, Pastor Tim Carscadden. He's been our guest many times, but yes. uh, we want to honor him. He mm -hmm. always helps us. We yes. say, hey, we're weary. Can you help us? Yeah. Yeah. The kind of leader she's talking about, he says, yes. come, I want to pray over you as yes. an apostle, yeah. as your leader. I want to encourage you. And yes. he always has a word from heaven. Yes. And it's always a right now word. Yes. And it always blesses us That's every awesome. time, Jackie. And it's I just pray for those watching that you find the yes. alignment with heaven for your own life. Yes. That yes. is so important. You're it right. is so, so important. Right. Yes. And right now, I believe it is vitally important because God is bringing his body together in yes. a greater measure of oneness. Yes, yes. With Unity. every joint supplying. Yes. See, the body won't be complete and be who we're supposed to be if all of us and all of you are yes. not bringing your gift and your portion forward. Yes. And then as we're knit together mm. in proper alignment, it's the word cartotismo. It's to like a being a chiropractor out of Ephesians 4. God has a place where we need to be. Mm. And when we're in proper position, proper alignment, yes. then you function better. Yes. Have you ever had your back out of whack and yes. you had to go to the chiropractor? Well, what happens once they get you back into an alignment, every part of your body moves better. Right. Yeah, so it's good. It's a good alignment. So, tr yeah. you know, move into it. Ask God to show it mm -hmm. where he, he says for you to be aligned. You can't choose your own. He has to choose it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a question. I'm going to dial it back a little bit uh -huh. because I get this question a lot by friends and family is, how do you know the voice of God? How do you know the voice of God is not your own? Because a lot of times it sounds like your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And how would one discern that to know what he's doing or where he's calling me to be aligned? Right. Well, the best thing I can say to start on that is saturate yourself in the Word of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, because if what you're hearing from the voice of God doesn't sound like the character, nature, and authority of God, and doesn't line up with what is revealed in His Word that reveals His will and His ways, yeah. then you're going to know that voice is mine. And then when you're still going, well, I think it is, but I'm not sure, and that's normal for all of us, that's where leadership comes into place. That where That's where people who have a longer or a deeper relationship that you trust their spiritual discernment, you trust their ability to hear the voice of God. I mean, I get things, and I've been at this for 30-something years. I will hear something, and I'll go, hmm, sounds like God, feels like God, but is it? And I'll still get that. So I will contact some of my leaders. And I'll say, this is what I'm hearing. Do you bear witness with this? And I, most of the time it's like, yeah, or, and it'll often be yes, but I think this is a word for down the road. Yeah. And it's not for now. So it's really the saturation in the word of God, worshiping God, yeah. getting so you so know his presence, not just what he's saying, I watch um, and have watched in the past some prophets who are so, I just got to get a word. I just yeah. got to get a word. Just yeah. got to get mm -hmm. a word. And it's like, worship, the word will come. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, you know, peace. it's in the yes. midst of worship, and peace is the other thing. Peace opens the door for worship, for the presence of God. Wow. Peace opens the door for the mm. word of the Lord. Yes. And when you have a word, when you deliver it, there's peace in it. Now that doesn't mean it can't be fiery, doesn't mean yeah. it can't be even warfare yeah. words, yes. but there is a settling of the peace of God that wow. comes with a true word from God. So let yeah. it be at peace in you when you're hearing. Yeah. What does it do on the inside? Does it settle you? Yes. And then move with it. Man, I have a question as a minister. Mm -hmm. uh, you've walked this road a lot longer than us. And what can hinder the anointing of God on our life? If we're trying to take territory, we're, we're trying to do the best we can in the kingdom of God. I found many blockades. Mm -hmm. Are there hindrances or, or do nots, maybe, or, do or not. you should do, mm -hmm. maybe, um, to help us walk out this road or any kind of hindrances that you would say? Well, I think one of the things is avoid the tyranny of busyness. Oh. oh. <laughs> How? Guilty. Guilty. That is a hard yes. one. Yes. It is a hard one. Yes. Um, and the more, you know, things start happening around you, all of a sudden you find, oh, I got up early and yes. I was late and I've not stopped. Mm. Yeah. And that's when, you know, you just have to pull back and go, okay, God, I need to reevaluate my life. Yes. Because... It's the tyranny of the urgent, this phone call, that phone call, this, and then go, whoa, wait, wait a minute, I haven't been able to cloister away with, yes. with Abba and mm -hmm. just be one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. That yes. will definitely hinder the anointing. Um, not obeying God with what He has prompting you to do. Ooh. Um, I was telling y'all before we went we live. We are getting convicted. <laughs> well, well, you're just right getting there. you're just getting what my hour last hour of sleep was. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because Holy Spirit was in my sleep, was walking me through these incredible encounters that I had early on and coming on through. But mm -hmm. some of the early ones were like really like. God, I'll show you a couple of them. Sure. One of them, Please. and I was really young in the things of Holy Spirit. And my spiritual mom at the time invited me to go pray for a man who had been in an accident. And they, the doctor said he was brain dead except for his brain stem. And he had been in the hospital on ICU for months. But we're, she said, we're going to go. We've got permission to go in. We're going to go pray for him. They don't think he's going to make it. But we're going to just go in and anoint and pray. And these were wild Pentecostal cares. Yeah, 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 okay? yeah. And Fine. I, I was coming out of Baptist world. So this yeah. was like, I don't know what I'm getting into. But hey, yeah. I got faith for it. God right. healed me. So, you know, we're good. Right. So I walked in. 
We prayed for him, we rebuked the devil, we called life forth, we walked, you know, did all of this stuff. I think they anointed everything in the room. Yeah. And we walked out of the hospital and we're walking toward our car in the parking lot. And these older seasoned women of God said there wasn't enough faith in the room for him to be healed. And I looked at him, I went, yeah, there was. <laughs> I was just, I was like 30 yeah. something. I was a little like, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah there was. And they're looking at me like, you don't know anything, which I didn't, but that's okay. <laughs> the next morning I get a phone call and this man who had been in a coma, brain dead except for his brain stem, the doctor walked in to his hospital room uh -huh. and as he did every morning, he said, how are you doing, Mr. So-and-so? Opened his eyes, looked at him and said, I'm doing well, how are you? Uh -oh. Wow, yes, Lord. <laughs> Serious. Yes, Lord. God is my witness. Yes, Lord. Yeah, oh, so Jesus. just having the yeah. simple, at that point for real girl, it yeah. was just simple childlike faith. faith. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have any understanding of how all the things in the spirit were. I just said, God, and let me tell you why I really believed that. Yeah. And I wondered if I would share this story, but yeah. just briefly, when yes. I was nine months old, um, I was diagnosed with encephalitis. Wow. wow. Yes. Swelling of the brain. Swelling of the brain. Wow. And it was bad. And they got me to the hospital. Mm. My mom and dad, we were living in St. Louis at the time. I was their first child. They had been married for, you know, a year and a half. I, I came very quickly. And um, they put me in quarantine, ICU, shaved half my head, oh, wow. uh, trying to get the fluid off, you know. Mm. and. Long story may short, but they told my mom she won't make it through the night. If she does, she'll be a vegetable and have to be in an institution to be cared for for whatever time of life she lives. So my parents sat in the waiting room outside the quarantine unit. and My mom says she just prayed a simple prayer. God, you didn't give her to us to be a vegetable. Heal her or take her home. Yes. It was a complete surrender. And the next morning, mm -hmm. my mother heard a voice <laughs> behind her say, tell them to check on her, she's fine. Ooh. And she went to tell them to go check on Well, we were just in there, everything's the same. She goes, no, check on them. <laughs> check on her. Again, yeah. Do it again. They walked in and everything was back <laughs> to normal. Amen. And completely supernaturally healed. My parents didn't tell me that story until I was 18, on my 18th birthday. Wow, wow. So I knew nothing of this growing up. And when my mom told me the story, I looked at her and I said, did they shave half my head? Was I under an oxygen tent? And did I have a pink blanket in the bed with me? Whoa. And she says, yes, how do you know that? I said, I mean, I'm 18, right? Yeah. I'm like, I have no clue. I've just had this picture all my life. Oh my. Oh my. But I say that because I believe there are some people out here yes. Yes. that Come you on. have been through some devastating situations, yes. Yes. but God preserved you. Oh my gosh, Lord. It may have been abuse. It may have been sickness. It may have been rejection. I, I don't know the depth of that, but it looked hopeless. It looked like there was no chance of survival, but God said, I saved you. Yeah. And yes. in that saving, he marked you, yes. he called you, and you may be wondering, well, it's too long. It's been too long. I haven't done anything with it. I found that out at 18, knew I was called into ministry, got disappointed and ran for 12 years. And God got a hold of me and he said, the years that the locusts have eaten, I will restore. And today Amen. I'm walking in the restoration of what God intended for the beginning. So I encourage you, don't give up on God. Don't give yes. up on the purposes that he created you for. It is why he created you. Rise up and be who he called you to be. Amen. 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 This is so encouraging. Oh, praise God. Oh, I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've noticed many people who are so called by God 
their life seems to be struck early on, mm -hmm. maybe even in the womb or, or after. Mm -hmm. But so if you're on the other side of that screen and you can relate to Apostle Jackie's story, I just, I thank God for your life. We mm -hmm. say you're an overcomer. Yeah. Be strengthened today yes. in the name of Jesus. Be strengthened. Can we just pray for the viewers yeah, right now? Can you just pray for healing, yeah. complete healing, Amen. complete yes. deliverance, Apostle Jackie? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Father, thank you so much Jesus. that at the cross, through your burial and resurrection and ascension, you took back everything that the devil had stolen. You conquered every sickness, every disease. You broke every curse, every generational curse. You defeated every assignment of hell that has been waged against the people of the earth. Lord, you did it so that we might know Jesus. Yes. And so, Lord, I pray for our viewers right now that the shackles of the past, the healings that they are needed, the deliverance that is needed, Holy Spirit, blow into their lives. By the blood of Jesus, blow into their lives and bring them to complete healing and deliverance and set them on the course that they may run well the race that you've set before them. Father, I bless these listeners. I bless them, God, with wisdom and revelation, knowledge and might, counsel and the fear of the Lord. Lord, loose Holy Spirit encounters. Meet them wherever they are. Your arm is not too short to save your your mercies are new every morning and i just declare and decree it is a new day yes, it yes, is yes. a new day yes. it is a new day rise up in the name yes. of jesus amen, amen. Yes, thank and you. listen if you have never asked jesus in your heart mm -hmm. this one that we're talking about that has yes. changed and transformed our lives and that yes. will do the same for you and you want to ask him into your heart you just do and pray this prayer with me. Yes. You can place your hand over your heart, but say, Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior, to come into my life and my heart. I believe that you died on the cross for me and rose again three days later. I believe you did that in place of my sins. Lead me and guide me and counsel me the rest of my life. Let your Holy Spirit burn in me with your fire and power in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you for yes. coming, Jackie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, and thank so you for joining us. We love you. And may this be the day you rise up in Jesus' name.